welcome you to the fiscal court. Uh, as is customary, we like to open our court meetings in the Pledge of Allegiance. Now I've got a, an honored guest here with us today, uh, Mr. Clarence Floyd, uh, pillar of the community and, and longtime public servant. So uh, I've asked Clarence if you'd open us up today in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes. Face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, President. I barely know where I'm at. They ain't convinced. What y'all do with that? I was going to say a pledge first. Thing. Dan, I never realized you were a follower. Well, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> I'm the bad influence, he said. I'm taking Fred in the zone. I barely know where Thank I you. am. Thank you, Clarence. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda, we've got minutes. Uh, we've got two sets of minutes. Uh, first, I'd like to ask that we revisit the uh, March 12th minutes uh, there in, in item 12 there on those minutes. We need to change that uh, the motion made by Master Wilson and seconded by Master Ranjal instead of Wilson and Wilson. Motion. We need to do a motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Uh -huh. Any opposed? And then our, the minutes from our previous meeting on uh, April 9th, uh, you've got a copy of those. Uh, what would be your pleasure with those minutes? <coughs> motion. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? We'll move now into uh, old business. We have uh, an ordinance, second reading of ordinance 140.1, uh, basically, which changes the wording uh, for the Pulaski County participation in the SPEDA. And basically, it allows the, the employees of SPEDA to opt out of the retirement system. Motion. Motion. Second. Motion and a second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, then, uh, we have a, a bid opening for the Irvine Road slide. Um, Martin, like, I think you've got I do. I have the bids here. Looks like there were two bids received. Uh, I have the newspaper advertisement. And uh, that advertisement required that the bids be submitted, uh, that the folks submitting bids had until 9 a.m. local time on Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019, uh, to uh, submit their bids. The first bid, and they're, they're to be time stamped uh, by the Pulaski County Clerk's Office by 9 a.m. Um, so one of the bids, I've looked at the timestamp on both of them and uh, one of them has two different timestamps. April 23rd, 2019 at 9.40 a.m., April 23rd, 2019 at 9.51 a.m. So under either scenario, that particular bid would not be, it says 9.51, it's got three stamps. That's another one that says 9.51 a.m. So under any circumstances or either scenario, that bid would not have been properly submitted on time. So the court can't consider it. Uh, the other bid, uh, the only other bid is time stamped April 23rd, 2019 at 8.59 a.m. It is from Weddell Enterprises. And the lump 
lump sum bid total is one, I think it's $120,000, looks like. So, is that for everything? Pardon me. Is that for everything, the steel? The it just says lump sum bid totals. Uh, someone needs to review this to make sure it meets the specifications before you all accept it. The one that the bid that was that is rejected because it wasn't timely submitted is from J A V E L L C, Lexington, Kentucky. So I'm not going to open it. So we need a motion then to accept this bid for review. Motion. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? No. Any opposed? Uh, this time sensitive to do today? Yeah. Need to, if I could, let's see. Um, let's, <coughs> let, let's jump a little out of line. I'm going to let Eugene come up and, and give his uh, give his road department report and then I'll let him go back with with you on the committee well, we got a, the engineer too as well that the, that um, wrote the specs. Yeah. specs just yeah. for the record I'm going to give this unopened bid back to the clerk for retention okay, so an issue what I've got today is a road work request request for 3,000 ton of rock from May and request for 400 ton of hot mix. First, we need a motion. You've got the copy of the road work request, gentlemen. What would uh, be your pleasure there? Motion to approve. Second. second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next, then, we've got a request for 3,000 tons of aggregate for the month of May. Motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Next then is a request for 400 tons of hot mix. Motion. Motion. Motion and a second. You getting all this, Pam? That was the last one I didn't. <laughs> who, who made the motion Wilson. on the rock, on the hot mix, rather? Wilson, Wilson. seconded by Wilden. And Wilden, thank you. <clears throat> We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Yeah. Any opposed? Thanks. Thank you. I want to thank Pam today for filling in for Alicia, who's on vacation. So she's told me to slow down a little bit. I'm trying. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now, if uh, if, if you would, Eugene, if you and uh, Doug, you want to be a part of that, is that and then uh, yeah. we need a third on that. You want to go back with him? Eugene, myself, and Doug. If you three would would care to look at that bid, make sure it meets the specs and we'll report back. All right, thank you. We'll get back on track here then. We've got um, next on new business is the municipal road aid agreement and resolution. Uh, it's what we do every every year to to join into this uh, money sharing with the state so we'll need to pass the agreement and also the resolution so I need a motion for the road aid agreement first motion second motion. it has to be a roll call vote not this one resolution so we have a motion and a second any further discussion all in favor aye, aye. opposed motion carries and then next is the resolution uh, Adopting and approving the execution of the municipal road aid co-op so okay. co program, um, so it just allows me to sign that sign that uh, resolution. So this will require a roll call vote, but I'll need a motion and a second. Motion, second. Motion, and a second. And any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? <coughs> roll call. Roll call. 
Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's back up. I've got a motion in a second. We'll have a. We need to have a roll call vote, please. You just start with the first. You just ask Wilson how you vote. Okay, I ask him how he votes. How do you vote? Yes. And Turpin. Then I write each one of these down. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Mr. Turpin. Yes. 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 Mr. Ranshaw? Yes. All right, now the motion carries. <coughs> Next item then uh, is a, a cooperative agreement between uh, the Forest Service and Pulaski County. We've got uh, several roads that uh, exist that we mutually share with the Forest Service, and that's in the 4th District and the 5th District. So you other guys don't have them, but we met with Tim Reed uh, in our office, and we went over the roads, and, and basically this agreement basically just shows whose responsibility they are, but it's also an agreement that allows us to, to cooperate and work back and forth with them if we need to fix roads or if they need to fix roads. So this is uh, something that we've, I guess, done... <coughs> Forever, but this is a uh, this is a renewed version of an old agreement. I would need a motion in a second to approve this motion. Second. Question: <clears throat> Is this a, uh, the same agreement? There was no changes in this agreement. Yeah, this is what he emailed to me after our meeting. So, motion, a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, next in brings us to our department reports. Uh, uh, we've got public safety, Stacy. I just want to ask the court's permission to advertise for uh, some SCBA bottles for the they're self-contained breathing apparatus tanks for the fire department. So what it is, we'd buy them in bulk. We'd get a better pricing on them. Motion. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Right. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, next in for our jail, uh, we have a presentation by Rod Dick. Good to see you wearing that uniform, Rod. Dick. It's better than the other uniform it that's is. over there. Yeah, that's right. I agree with that. Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm a little slow. It took me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, I passed out there uh, from the uh, month of February and March. Uh, as you fellows know, one of the cornerstones of Anthony's administration was he wanted to step up efforts with community service. And uh, ways of that was, uh, you know, out here picking up trash and working with other municipalities and so on. So the month of February is not a, a not exactly a full, re, uh, that's when things kind of got started off. But uh, we broke it down into districts. You have that, but I'll kind of uh, go over these. In, uh, in District 1, there was 1,760 pounds. District 2, 3,400 pounds. District 3, 4,580. District 4, 3,220 and District uh, 5, 3570. In that month of uh, February, they cleaned up two dump sites in the month in uh, District 5, Mike, for a total of 2,020 pounds, picked up 16 various tires, and then got 25 uh, road signs that they took back over there. For that month, there was 19,080 pounds of various stuff. There was 24 days, and we were using a, an average of seven hours a day. That was 12 inmates. If you broke that down, that was 2,016 hours. And using a, uh, using 725, uh, the sweat equity contribution back to the county would have figured out to $14,600. If you look at the month of March, 
It was District 1, 6,610 pounds, District 2, 6,150, District 3, 6,190, District 4, Mark, it was 2520, but they cleaned up two dumps out there, and there was 5,340 pounds that came out of those. And uh, District 5, their total was, was 9440, but included in that was that uh, pride cleanup on that. So, you know, if you look at, uh, at that using the, the same three crews with four inmates to the crew on a seven-hour work day, the totals on that would have been 2,352 hours, and you know the sweat equity contribution back to the county of that would have would have mounted out at the $17,052. Uh, one of the other things, Martin, we've got a consent form that we're going to bring over for you to look at. All right, sir. Uh, and that's going to consist of maybe on uh, some of these abandoned cemeteries where you have to cross private property we get that uh, but I think uh, and I'm not I'll let Anthony if he might he want to talk too but uh, you know I think things he's got this thing going and, and it's something that uh, it's very much worthwhile and it, it's something that you can see it's a difference in Jimmy I mean you can see it I'm sure enough up there with yours and Jason so I will yield what time I have left to the jail well, we greatly appreciate it and, yeah, uh, yeah. And well, it's, uh, you can see it when you drive down the road. You can see what you guys are doing, and we appreciate it. One of, one of the best, one of the things I've been promoting is let's make Plastic County the cleanest <coughs> county in the state. And boy, if we put a dent in that, we've really done a good job. And Anthony and Danny, and with all these pride cleanup and all this other stuff, I think it's been really, really good for this county. Yeah, Danny. Danny's been real great to work with. You know, he supplied us with a lot of the bags and things, uh, and trucks and. Um, personnel that we needed. Also, we've started working with uh, the city of Somerset. I see the mayor back there. We've started to do some things with them as well. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do was, is, is to make Pulaski County a great place to live in. And um, some of my ideas were, you know, to start giving back to the community. And uh, I think uh, Rod there, he's been a great asset for me. He keeps up with that. and, and uh, uh, we'll probably start giving quarterly reports. Uh, that way we keep everybody appraised of what's going on. But, uh, thank you all. That's awesome. Thank, thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Rod. Thanks, Rod. Yeah, you couldn't stay away. That's county government. Next in, Sheriff, do you have something you want to approach the court? I would like morning, to request Jeff. that the uh, proceeds from the auction that we had a couple of weeks ago, uh, the sh that the sheriff's office, the items that the sheriff's office put into the uh, auction, that those proceeds be uh, placed in the uh, sheriff's office vehicle account to help perpetuate that uh, that us keeping being able to keep purchase vehicles. Yeah. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Do we have final numbers to that auction? <clears throat> I do. <clears throat> I did bring them. You can get a copy. It was a successful, it was a, a very successful auction. Good. I will say that. Plus it helped us clean out the impound lot greatly. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else going all right? Yes, it is. And um, I'm, I have, uh, we're interviewing for a position downstairs. I'm going to leave right now, but uh, I thank you all for your time. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh -huh. Thank you, Sheriff. Thanks. Next in will be uh, our 911 call center. Skip Danny. Did I skip some other ways? I'll come back to you, Danny. Aaron, give you a thumbs up. He'll go next. Yeah. <laughs> he can give you a thumbs Herman up. Thumbs up. Bandaged up. Slowly but surely, I'll get yeah. there. Uh, today, I just uh, we've got a position available for a part-time dispatcher at 911, and I'd like to ask the court to recommend uh, Sarah Burdine as part-time. And uh, I know she's uh, she's had stuff going on, so she'll need probably another week or so before she can start at least. So, 
Motion. We have two motions. Do we have a second? Second. No nope. motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? No. Any opposed? Thank you. I don't need to get her last name. Uh, next, then we'll come back to Danny with solid waste. Poor Danny. Uh, he's uh, I'd like to echo the same sentiment you guys have for the jailer uh, on this uh, road loader pickup. It's been uh, a godsend to us as our department and to the county um, to get out there and get these things cleaned up. Um, I know when I get phone calls, I can call out there and that, that same day we're getting dumps cleaned up where it was taking maybe a day or two to get out there and get things. So we're keeping the, the county cleaner and everywhere I go, I brag on the, the way this is working to anybody that will listen. The jailer's been awesome to work with and all his staff has worked really well with us. But today um, I bring forth uh, six names for seasonal employment. Uh, start date for April 29th. Um, not all of them will start at the same time. They're all they're all college kids, so when they get out of college, they'll start at different different dates. But one can start on Monday. The names are Blake Burton, Caleb Mosier, Dakota Sturgill, Taylor Hurt, Evan Brinson, and Jacob Clark. Oh, second. We have a motion and a second to hire six seasonal workers. Any further discussion? All in favor? No. Any opposed? And don't forget this uh, are Saturday. These at your cost. These are we yeah, have one on our board. Thank you. Reimburses all these. Uh, this Saturday is our household hazardous waste day, uh, eight to two. So if you got any paints, pesticides, chemicals, fluorescent light bulbs, looking to get rid of, come out and drop them off to us. If you got a list, you could give her. I don't know if she got all those names. She didn't get all the names drop down. Oh, she's got okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Danny. <clears throat> Next then will be our treasurer. Make sure I haven't skipped anybody else. Uh, Joan, do you have? Okay. Uh, the first item I would have is the bill list. We've got a copy of your bill list. Uh, what would be your pleasure there? Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? No. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Uh, and I would like to get some feedback from you all if you've heard from any of our vendors how the two bill lists a month is working out. I haven't heard anybody complain, so that's a good thing. Okay. All right. I know it's working the girls to death, but, you know, and I hate that, but we're, we're, we're muddling, so. Okay. Um, the next item I have is uh, the quarterly for July 1 through March 31. Can't believe we're three quarters in and almost three quarters in a month. Motion. Second. Motion and a second to approve the quarterly financial statement. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the last item I have today would be um, fund transfers. Uh, and uh, I discussed earlier with someone that the reason why we have fund transfers right now, the reason for these is it being like right at the end of a quarter, we're waiting for some funds to get in. So it's just a little, nobody's really in trouble. It's just a little cash flow issue. We're waiting for it to come in. To approve the fund transfers? Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries. You want to go back and 
is the right. bed. Uh, that is all I have, gentlemen, um, except for we will be having the second of our, the second and last of our budget workshops this afternoon or after court. If anybody wants to attend, we're ready. We've had one. It went well. It went long, but Sorry. we made through it. Made it through. All right, then we, let's, uh, let's go back and, and hear from our, our bid review committee. Uh, what did you all decide yeah. there, Dan? The bid committee recommends uh, uh, Weddell Enterprise for the uh, urban road slide. It uh, met all the bid advertisements and specifications. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Is there a, is there a timeline to start <coughs> the project? Uh, as soon as we get, um, we talked about that during the committee, is making sure the landowners, we have um, approval and everything from them, and I think we do, so it's a matter of getting mobilized and, and getting a contract signed so the wedding will start. Well. Right. Um, next, then we'll, we'll go into our citizens' comments. We have two today. I've got uh, Clarence Floyd here with us. Would like to speak to us about our upcoming flag retirement ceremony. And Clarence, I told you when you asked me that I was going to try to work you in early, and I totally forgot about that. But Judge, that's all right. That's but I'm glad you're here with us. It's okay. You know, today when we turn the TV on, we're we're being bombarded in every way with the American flag. The American flag is a symbol of freedom and justice known all over our world to a lot of people. Up until several years ago, we never knew what happened to the flags when they were to be retired. So the American Legion started collecting flags. We got about 200 flags a year, uh, and then we'd have a small uh, honor uh, to burn those flags and do it according to law. Well, several years ago, we wanted to do something about that, so we approached the city and I asked the mayor about some uh, recycle containers and they, they furnished us five. So we took them and had them painted red, white, and blue. So we started putting them at different places in town trying to find a place where we could get the most flags uh, retirement and the use of those containers. Uh, we have one out in front of the courthouse that's been there since day one when we put it there. We have uh, one at each of the Kroger stores. We have one at... Uh, down at Sergeant Joe's, and we have one at the Energy Center. And since we've been doing that, we started about 40 flags a month. And now we're up to over 100 flags a month. They're right at 100 flags a month. So this year, we've collected 800, over 800 flags to be retired. So to, to do that many flags, it would take you probably all day. So uh, we've come up with a program to where we're trying to educate people, especially our children. Our children knows nothing about the flag and what it really stands for. You go to a ball game uh, and, you know, people don't pay any attention to the ball game. They don't even pay attention to, it, to the national anthem, much less the flag. Uh, and, you know, that's our fault because we, have, we haven't trained them. I'll never forget the day I was inducted into the Army. I stood and raised <laughs> my hand and swore before God that I would uphold and defend the Constitution and the American flag so help me, God, if it meant my life. And I mean that today just as much as I did that day when I was 20 years old. So American flag is precious. And when I see somebody wearing clothing, I don't hope nobody's here today wearing clothing. When I see clothing made out of the American flag, you know, it offends me because that's not what the flag was made for. That flag represents everything that we believe in to be holy and just. So we have, a, we have, according to law, I think, uh, Martin, it's 1942 or 43 when Congress passed a law how you're to handle a retired flag. Uh, and so we've studied back in the law, and we're trying to do that. In the last four years, uh, we've had a public flag retirement, uh, and we're going to do that again on May the 11th at uh, 11 o'clock out at Summer Sports Park. Jerry Eichard's always been real good to us to let us use that property back there. There's oodling of parking. 
uh, and it's just a good place to, to have it. So this year we'd like to invite everyone to come and do that. I'm going to have brochures out. The judge has been so gracious uh, to let the, his folks provide the printing for us, and, and judge, we thank you for that. that. That's a big help for us. So we're looking forward to, uh, we've already notified all the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, and, and now I'm in the process of going to the elementary schools and asking the principals at least to make an announcement of it, <coughs> where I'll get to all of them or not, you know. It's kind of hard, as all of you know, to get volunteers. And sometimes you, you're, if you want something done, you do it yourself. So that's kind of in my motto. But I appreciate Judge you and the court, and I appreciate the mayor and uh, and the council for what they've done to support us in every way uh, about the flag retirement. So we're going to burn about 400 on, on the 11th, uh, and then we've made other means to where we're going to get the others burned. Uh, and I don't care to tell you what, what we've done. We found a place, I won't mention the name, but they incinerate us for it. They can incinerate 400 in just a short time. And if we did it, it would take several hours so what we always do we have a flag that is a representative of all flags and we even for those that we don't burn personally those flags have already had a ceremony and it's been done according to the law and after the flags are burned the law says that you collect the ashes and you bury them and we do that the city street department uh, takes the back hole and they dig the hole. I take the ashes and we have a ceremony and put them in and bury them. So American flag is a precious thing. So Judge, I thank you for letting me come and thank you for listening. And I appreciate everyone of you coming. Thank you. I remember <clears throat> the first time you and I talked about this, I had just seen a Boy Scout service and I was so moved by it and I'd never seen a service like this flag retirement. I was so moved, I contacted you. I said, Clarence, what do you all do? And you told me that you were American Legion had a program you did. I said, let's, let's work together. Let's get you and me, and let's get the city involved. I said, let's, let's, have, a, let's have a huge ceremony. I said, let's make, this, let's make this go statewide and maybe nationwide, and let's, let's catch fire, pardon the pun, for the American flag and, and its proper treatment. And I appreciate your unfailing service to do this every year and and make it better each year and and, and i encourage everybody if you've not seen that service mate it is it is so humbling uh to be a part of that service and it's a it's just a great one of my favorite services that i that i attend ever so i appreciate you doing that and appreciate you your faithfulness to, to keep doing it thank, thank you judge yeah. and we're going to have two good speakers this year we're going to have the judge and the mayor. <laughs> now, Are you, you know, sure that's two? Just those two. I'll be quick. But, hey, I always limit them. I, I, I tell you a good one. I had a, a couple of years ago, I had a, a brigadier general a friend that came and, and was our speaker. I made the mistake saying, now, this is general, and I introduced him, and I said, we've asked him to take some time. And he understood me to say, Take all the time. <laughs> and 35 minutes later, he was still preaching. Tell us about the Pentagon. That was the year we had two pass out, wasn't it? <laughs> Sir. <laughs> anyway, I know they'll be brief, but we appreciate all of you, Judge. We appreciate all your work and the mayor and, and the council, plus the court. You all have been very generous, and you don't know how much we appreciate it. Thank you, Clarence. You, Thank you. All right, next then, uh, we have Deborah Kidd Trammell. I uh, would like to approach the court. You've got a package, of, I think, on your desk there that she's graciously prepared for you. Hopefully, we can get through this in, uh, in a few minutes. We, we shall. All right. um, I apologize for not having one for um, the county attorney, but you may have mine when, when we're finished. I've got generous um, people on either side of me. <laughs> so we can share. Yes, ma'am. I taught school for 35 years at the elementary, middle, and high school and collegiate level and served as nine years as executive director of an arts council. So I understand budgets. I understand working for nonprofits and, and all that. And my husband, uh, Ken, he's a retired <coughs> Air Force and also a retired civil servant and senior executive service. And he's currently uh, the general manager of Bowhead Logistics. We both are college educated and very invested in Pulaski County. We both grew up in Pine Knot, Kentucky. 
in McCreary County. And of course, you know, we've done lots of shopping. Both my boys were born here in Somerset. So, and we have owned property here for over 15 years, in addition to other places, but we've owned here in Pulaski County, and we love this county. Um, so we come as residents today of the Sloan's Valley community. This is a community that worked together very closely, coordinated a small rowboat for three, uh, a little over three weeks to have um, access to the outside world, basically, because we had no other way out once the flooding began. Um, on, I would bring to your attention the site location that you have, for those of you who may not know. It shows there the Cumberland River, and you can see 27 and the Sloan's Valley community. And the part that's circled in red there, you can see a little inlet from the river. And then the little blue thing is what we call the blue hole. Some of you may have even gone uh, down to walk through the caves or, or visited the blue hole. And the second page there shows the section that was underwater from the 19th of February to March 11th. And we were uh, 15 feet above the road level. So there was no way that you could, you know, drive any kind of a vehicle through that area. The next page, um, the little arrows there shows you the part in question. You can easily there see the inlet and you can see the little curve there in the Sloan's Valley Road before it gets up into the Fins and Feathers community. The next page is a graph from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers showing the peak of the water. And we all know, we've heard, you know, that this is um, once in a decade and all that, but there are residents who live in that community who endured some pretty severe hardships during this time. The next two pages are from the Lake Cumberland water level history for the month of February, and I've highlighted from the 19th. And the next one is for March, and I've highlighted through the 12th, when we were still a little bit, we were going through water on the 12th, but you could get out by March 12th. There are six households who live there 12 months out of the year, and there are 13 vacation and seasonal homes that were included in this flooding where we had no access. The residents' um, age are from one year old to 86 years old. Five children were unable to attend school for this entire length of time. Some of the teachers did provide um, homework that they could do, but we had to, of course, row across a little leaky rowboat to get to that and also to collect mail and to get to the other side. The water level peaked at February 25th at 755 0.8 feet, and that was when it was 15 feet above the road level. Um, the graphs that I showed you, that's above sea level, not above the level of our road. We were, um, we knew it was raining a lot, but we had no idea that our area would flood and that we would be basically stranded for all that time. On the morning of February the 19th, my husband and I decided that we might want to put a car on the other side of the, the little dip there by the, what we call the slough and the blue hole. So when we took our car over, and if you look at the pictures, you can see that on the 19th what the road looked like at 853, 852, 726. So the water was just beginning to come over. We thought it might be a day or two, so we decided to take a car over, as I said. Other residents had no idea. They did not take a car over. We're the only ones in our little community that had a car that was on the other side. <coughs> then as you look at 855, you can see the water coming across the road. And then by 1054, it was completely inaccessible. The subsequent pictures that you see here show the small rowboat that we had. Um, some of the residents worked, so they had to go out at 5 o'clock in the morning in the snow and the rain via the little rowboat to try to get to the other side. And um, you had to put everything in a garbage bag, your shoes, your purse, whatever, and hope it didn't leak. And then once you got there, you had to walk up, you know, to the top of the road there where we had our vehicle parked. Our neighbor actually had to rent a car so that he could get to the grocery and do other things that he needed to do. 
The mail carrier was wonderful. We met her on the other side about every day or every other day for mail delivery. And then we worked together as a community regarding the boat because if someone needed to get out at 1 o'clock and another person at 12 o'clock <coughs> or vice versa, then you had to coordinate which, who was going to bring the boat back and have it on the right side of the river. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we all had to work together as a community, and we did. Everyone supported each other, and everyone made sure everyone had food and what they needed. But we're not saying it was not a hardship. Um, you can see my husband standing there on your next to last page with a road sign, and I would encourage you to look at these pictures very carefully because you can see that at one point you could not see this sign, and that's not at the bottom of the hill. So it shows you um, the reason I put him there by the sign, the reason he did that is you can see the sign and how deep that was. Um, then once the water had receded, our road was just crumbling. Um, we were even hesitant to go across the road for fear we would, it would slide us into the river because there's no guardrail or anything there. So the road department did come down and take the top level, um, the layer of the asphalt, and dump it into the riverside. Um, but what we're asking is that as you consider the budget, I would ask for um, repaving of the Sloan's Valley Road and the Fins and Feathers. It was, uh, there was some paving done last year, but the paving is not sufficient. I understand, you know, it's difficult. I know that paving must be a, a real a hard thing to do because it's really wavy and you can barely walk on it and you, when you drive on it, you're in a, you feel like you're on the river again. So we would ask that that be corrected. And also for the next budget year, we would ask that something be addressed regarding the low level there between the blue hole and the inlet of the river, possibly raising the road as it was, as I understand, was it, Mike, in 1990? Yeah. Was they, 1990? They raised it uh, six or eight feet there around early 90s. I don't know the exact date. but. And we do understand that this was, you know, um, rainfall that was not seen for quite some time, but that's not to say that that won't happen again. And um, as I said, we had no other way out. There is no, there's no back road at all to get out. So um, we appreciate everyone's attention and we do hope that you would look at the pictures. And I would just want you to know that the residents there um, appreciate the fiscal court and we did work together and we're here as spokesmen for every resident of that community. So we'll broach questions if you have any for us. My, Kenny, you want to come on up? I'll need a packet of that for record. Do we have an idea when the last time that road flooded? Um, yes, it flooded around the 1989 and that's when they raised it and then it had also flooded previously. It, it flooded back in 84 when it got up high and then again last of 80 right. early 90s it flooded again that's when they went in there and raised it they raised it six feet I think then we have had any more problems <coughs> until this year well, we understand it's a catastrophic <coughs> event. Uh, you know you, you can't fix everything all the time but uh, some, something, uh, uh, you know, we had some, some older folks that lived back there. Uh, it was if, bad. if there had been an emergency, <laughs> you know, that would have been all she wrote type stuff. So uh, just asking for your consideration on that. The, I guess the question that I have is in the center point or as the deepest point, how many feet did the water get over the road? 15 feet. 15 yeah. feet. 15 feet. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. was, it was deep. I mean, that sign, when I was down there, you couldn't see the sign at all like that picture they showed there and, and that sign six foot tall when it was laid on the in, in situations like this, you know, we can request for uh, discretionary funds or emergency funds, mm -hmm. but one of the things that restricts us so so dearly is in that situation is the, the right of way and and you know getting permission from the landowners to do an elevation change of that magnitude takes a bigger right of way. Well, this is uh, this is government it, land. Core Corps of Engineer. 
Yeah, the core owns on both sides. Uh, yes, right. And the blue hole is actually on bigger than ever. And then that being said, a lot of times what we can do as a local government will determine what the Corps of Engineers allows us to do. We're also in contact with our Senator and Representative yes. Hal Rogers, and we intend to stay connected, and we intend to stay connected with you guys. Um, we're not troublemakers. You know, we've paid taxes, and like I said, we're professional people um, who have dealt with, you know, situations beyond our control before. But this is something that can be remedied and should be re remedied for the citizens. We have other folks who are at this time vacationers slash part-timers, as we call them. But there we have three households that uh, plan to be permanent down there. So it is, it is a vital little community, a close-knit community. And it just uh, it would appear that we should be able to have a road that we can use, you know. Um, emergency funds might be an option. Well, that being said, I know when we were looking at the FEMA damage across the entire county, mm -hmm. one of the things the Corps of Engineers sent us is wherever we have roads that are in federal property, there are federal dollars mm -hmm. exactly. to correct those problems. Exactly. It's, just, it's just being patient with the paperwork and moving it across one desk to the other. And we're certainly uh, willing to do anything that we can on our end to assist. Well, being retired from the federal government, I understand the bureaucracy, so that gets involved. Here, so. And as a contractor for the federal government, yeah. he's every day talking about the molasses movement of the government on occasion. Yeah. <laughs> so we understand all that. But we just wanted to speak on behalf of the citizenry. But if there had been a fire or a medical emergency, there it would have been a really bad situation because no medical, you know, no one could have gotten over to us. And had we even understood, you know, we were just fortunate that one of the part-timers had this little rowboat. Um, there's a man down there who, you know, helps with the docks. He has a pontoon boat, but there was no way you could use a pontoon boat because the water level's in the treetops. Actually, Kenny tied rope from one tree to the other going across the slough, and we were pulling ourselves across sometimes. If you think of the movie Josie Wales, <laughs> the ferry boat. But if you go down there now, you'll look out in the middle of that slough and you'll see branches cut off where we trimmed them where we could get the boat across and they're mm. 20 feet tall from down in the, in the bottom of some of those places. But we appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, Thank you all. Thank you. We will, we will continue to try to help. Yes, sir. And we're here if you need us. We're well, we'll give you our emails, our phone numbers, and we just want to help. We don't want to be a nuisance. We just want to help. And thank you so much for the information. That That, that is well, tremendous mm -hmm. benefit. Well, well thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, one item, actually a couple items that we didn't have time to get on the agenda, but I've got, if you remember, we had road hearings uh, back February, I think it was, maybe even January, but uh, one road that I would like to bring before the court to, to bring into the Black County Road System is Alice Lane. That's um, up there off of Langdon Road in your district and second district. It's, uh, it's already got blacktop. Uh, the county maintenance goes to a certain point, but then stops, and at that point, the road has deteriorated and, and there are homes back there. The bus, the Science Hill bus has to go back there to pick up a student and, and having trouble getting through so we've we've decided to try to bring that road in uh, we did have a committee go and look at that road uh, that would have been Jimmy and Jason went and looked at that and we had a hearing and and nobody showed uh, in a you know against the bringing the road in at the hearing <coughs> it is a uh, yeah it is it's blacktop so it's a conforming yeah, yeah it's conforming conforming road. Road. So I would entertain a motion to, to bring motion. Alice Lane in. We have a motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I've got um, one announcement to make. We have a. Uh, that wasn't made May 2nd uh, at 12 o'clock is the National Day of Prayer. We'll be over at the Judicial Plaza. In the event of rain, it will be up here in 
in the courtroom. So we'll plan on 12 o'clock on May 2nd. That's a week from Thursday uh, for the National Day of Prayer. And that's at noon. Yes, and then we'll, we need to, I need to ask to go into executive session in a moment, uh, so I'll, I'll do that, but anything else from the court that y'all had? had I make an announcement. The same day as the flag uh, burning, uh, the, the uh, Friends of the NRA is trying to do a salute to uh, heroes. We're, uh, we're trying to find sponsors for 147 heroes in which we're going to do a 21 gun salute to one in every seven of those heroes. So if anybody's interested in sponsoring a hero of your choice, you can buy a sponsor ticket and uh, they get a free dinner out of it and a chance to win uh, a rifle. That, that, uh, so I wanted to put that out there if anybody's interested uh, and come, t come support the heroes. There'll be hopefully 147 plus heroes at this event. And of course, all the money raised goes to further the sports like archery and the youth archery program and uh, skeet shooting and stuff like that. So, that we thank you. Were aware of that. That's the reason we tried to do what we were doing it within an hour, so people could have an opportunity. To so it'd be a good day to go support them and then come and support the heroes, yeah. veterans, and first responders. So, if I'm not mistaken, that is also the same day as Somerset's. Food cart festival. Yeah, yeah so it's a big day. Big day for what going on that day. Classic yeah. Canada. So okay. All right. So, in other words, good. don't speak long. He keeps reiterating, don't speak long. Okay, speak. I got you. A lot going on that day. Our park security, we talked about. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. Uh huh. And Joan says we're over budget yes. on this. And for right now, until after July, our new budget, I would like to for just have one park security, which would be Mike Wallace. I'd like to make that a motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? I still uh, think we need to have two to cover when Mike's not there. Somebody else to cover when Mike can't be there. So. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Let's let's have roll call, please. We get split vote. <coughs> Mr. Wilson, how do you? Yes. Mr. Turpin? No. Yes. Mr. Wilden. Mr. Strunk? Yes. And Mr. Ranshaw? No. Motion carries three to two. Um, next item, last item, and uh, we have a, a personnel, a couple of personal issues I need to discuss in an executive session. So, uh, I, you know, this will be our, our last thing of the day, so we may be there for a little while. You all are free to, to leave as we go to executive session. I would need a motion. Uh, Can I add, though, that we will have budget workshop yeah. probably about 10 or 15 minutes after a court meeting. Do we need a motion to go in? Anybody motion. Else? We'll have that. All right, we have a motion. Second. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? We will reconvene shortly. Let's, uh, let's reconvene our court meeting and just say that no action was taken no. in the executive session, and I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 